Cooper Auto Pets was released on September 24th of 2021. Initially created by a team of two dedicated developers, this game rapidly gained popularity, reaching a peak of over 10,000 monthly players. Over the life of the game, there have been a plethora of balance changes, tweaks, and reworks. The current state of the game is very well balanced, all things considered, but it was not always like this. There are some pets in the past that worked well in their time, but needed rebalancing to work with newly introduced pets. Other pets were just way too strong from the get-go, and needed a swift nerf hammer. Today we're going to be highlighting some of the most insane, most overpowered, largest changes ever made in Super Auto Pets. Starting out our list, this pet wasn't crazy broken, but it goes to show just how much a small stat change can make a huge difference. When the swan was first released at a 3-3 stat line, it was one of the strongest early game pets in the game, offering big economy boosts while also boasting a stat line that could readily compete with other available pets. This stat line was later reduced to a 1-3, which is still frequently played, mind you, even though it basically doesn't trade with anything straight out of the shop. Keeping in tune with another early game pet, we have the fish. Originally stating, level up, give all friends plus one plus one, this ability made fish arguably the strongest tier one in the entire game. This may not sound too crazy given today's pet climate, However, think back to OG Super Auto Pets days, where Turtle Pack was the only group of pets and stats are king. Even after reducing the ability to hit only two friendly pets, Fish is still regularly chosen throughout the early game. Tagging alongside the fish, we've got the Otter. Originally giving friendly pet plus one plus one on buy, this allowed for some crazy two squad early games, where you'd get one solid unit and just spam otters over and over, stacking on top of each other. If you got the otter from level 1 to level 3, it would give one friend plus 9 plus 9 in a 2 squad. Now that the attack has been removed and it's spread out among several pets on your team, it makes it a lot less of a priority early game, but overall, still very good. Now let's discuss some mid-tier pets, starting out with the peacock. According to these super early patch notes, one proposed ability that was used on the test server read Hurt gain 4 attack with no limit. Later removing the no limit portion, this is a one time Super Auto Pets has seen a no limit qualifier in an ability. Now only slightly comparing is the Behemoth, whose much later stat line ability was 100-100 cap. This limitless attack scaling may not have broken the Peacock but a swap to health with the lollipop, it could have created an absolute monster. Probably for the best that we have limits in Super Auto Pets. Next up is one of my old go-tos, the Emperor Tamarin. This ability used to read, give 50, 100, or 150% of its stats to the leftmost shop pet based on its level. This was an unassuming overpowered ability, as 50% of 2020 was only, you know, 10-10, which isn't that crazy. However, where you start to see issues is getting it to level 3. You get a level 3 Tamarin to 30-30, and suddenly you can have any pet you want in the shop as a 50-50 right out of the gate. Just imagine a 50-50 Octopus on turn 9, and I think you'll see why Tamarin was later nerfed. Speaking of Octopus, this little slippery friend used to have a before attack ability. No, we aren't talking about that before attack ability. Yes, this may not look so different changing from before attack to after attack, but SAP veterans will attest that having it snipe the unit Octopus was going to attack introduced a wild chain of attacks that was just unhealthy for the game. Essentially what would happen is you'd have a Tiger Octopus, and it would reasonably destroy the entire team without ever attacking, because as soon as it killed the pet that Octopus was going to attack, it would just try attacking again and shoot another line. Elephant had the same issue when paired with the Blowfish, and that was also similarly changed after attack. Trust me, we don't want to go back to that state. Now we're getting into some of the more egregious pet abilities, starting with the Nurse Shark. On release, the Nurse Shark's ability reads, Faint, spend all trumpets, and deal double damage to one, two, or three random enemies. Considering you could get 25 trumpets extremely easily with the likes of Highland Cow, this Nurse Shark would execute 3 pets on Faint, possibly 4 if it traded 1 for 1 when attacking. 
It has now been nerfed into the ground. Its current ability reads faint, spend up to six trumpets, dealing triple that damage to one to three enemies. And the best part? Nurshark is still pretty decent in trumpet teams. The cockatoo may not have been on your mind as one of the most insanely broken pets, and I wouldn't say it's broken, however the original cockatoo had one of the biggest nerfs that we've ever seen to a buy sell pet. Formerly giving 3 faint pets plus 2 plus 1 on buy, cockatoo now only gives 1 random faint pet plus 2 plus 2. This has changed the pet from a mass faint team scaler into more of a one off buy sell that sometimes just isn't even worth buying compared to other tier 4s, because it's just a pair. Now this nerf really hit me where it hurts. I'm not saying Alpaca didn't deserve a nerf, but the way they nerfed it just gutted the pet. Originally Alpaca's ability read, friend summoned, give it plus one, plus two, or plus three experience, depending on level, and works two times per turn. This made Alpaca the perfect pivot pet in my mind. At level two, you could get a level three pet from literally nothing, as long as you had a couple slots open on the team. Now Alpaca's ability reads friend summon, give it plus one experience, and then it works one, two, or three times per turn depending on the level. Naturally this is much worse. It's still nice to have as experience is experience, but gone are the days where you could have one huge pivot turn, get a level three cat in one turn, setting up your team for success. Again, I know it had to be done, but it really was such a fun pet to play back then. So at this point in the video, we've been strictly talking about individual abilities, and you may be thinking to yourself, when is he gonna get to the abomination that was Unicorn Pack on release? Don't worry, we'll get there, however I will posit that Unicorn Pack's woes were largely due to one simple design change, limited triggers. Now limiting the number of times a pet's ability can activate has been a balanced technique implemented throughout Super Auto Pets, allowing them to maintain their uniquely powerful effects while stopping any runaway scaling. This was not a problem unique to Unicorn Pack, many other pets have had this nerf in the past, however the initial lineup in Unicorn Pack had far fewer trigger limiters than it needed, causing for some insane runaway combos. Because there are so many pets who were nerfed this way, let's just rapid fire all of the most overpowered pets who were later nerfed using a trigger limiter. The cat used to have no trigger limits, allowing you to buy as many pizzas as you want, all giving massively buffed stats. The flying fish was a particularly dangerous pet, for at level 2 it would give any summoned pet in battle level 2. Seeing the insane runaway effects, team would reduce this ability to 2 triggers per turn. Vampire Bat was one of the worst offenders of the limitless triggers in the unicorn pack. Pair it with a couple of microbes and you annihilate the whole team while getting 50 health for free. This was also later reduced to 2 triggers per turn. Cyclops, in a similar vein to Flying Fish, would give runaway levels in battle. Paired with the excess level up synergies in Unicorn Pack, this pet was forced to be reckoned with. Again, later reduced to 2 triggers per turn. Turboa is somewhat of an unassuming trigger limiting pet, but when you combine it with the consistent apple sources such as the new worm and owl, it would have been far too powerful, two trigger limits per turn. Mana Hound, while not entirely broken on its own, paired a little too well with the likes of Chimera, prompting players to just roll all of their gold away every turn, suffering no consequences in battle. This was later limited to five rolls per turn. And last and absolute worst on the list, we have the Jersey Devil. I'm not exaggerating when I say the Jersey Devil was a new level of broken. When selling level 3s is as easy as pilling an anteater or getting a 2 for 1 selling a stoat, it was not uncommon to see Jersey Devils giving upwards of 30-30 to every summoned pet. Some extreme examples show maxing out a behemoth on buy with a single Jersey Devil giving 99-99. Even with limiting to 5 triggers overall, this pet is still incredibly powerful. At level 3 it gives 15-15 in stats to every summoned pet. That'll do it for our dive into the rise and fall of the ultra powerful pets in Super Auto Pets. I hope you enjoyed, it's a different style of video than I normally make, but I thought it'd be fun to dive into this topic, so let me know if you like these videos and you want to see some more. For now, this is Table for Two, I'll catch you in the next one.